today. Good morning. Or good afternoon, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, Ann Welburn in the wings to follow up with any questions that I might miss. And we also have Jay Hopkins doing the videoing. So welcome everyone and welcome, Molly. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us, uh, I believe you were born in chloride? Yes. In about 1931. Uh, who were your parents? My dad's name was Conrad Rivera. And my mother was uh, Juanita Burule. And uh, tell us about the Gurleys. Uh, did you know your great-grandparents and your grandparents? I just knew my grandmother on my mother's side. Uh -huh. That's the only one that... And what was her name? Petra. Okay. Gurley. Uh -huh. And what did your uh, what did your father do for a uh, t t for a living there in Chloride? Well, we had a, a goat ranch. I was born on a goat ranch, and that that was it. I mean, you know, there wasn't much to do back then but just take care of the goats and whatever you had. And so that was 1931, so that was starting right during the Depression period, right? Yes. About how many goats did your family have? Oh, we had lots of them. I couldn't count them. But, yeah. Go ahead. And then uh, from Chloride, we moved to Hillsboro when I was three years old. We went across from uh, chloride t through the hills in a wagon. And I was three years old and settled in Hillsboro. Did you take the goats with you? No, they left them behind. They... And was the wagon drawn by horses? Or? Horses, yes. And when you moved to Hillsboro, then what, what, was, your, what was your family doing there then? My dad started out panning gold. That was what he did. That's what we lived on. It wasn't much money, but uh, he'd go every morning. He had a special place that he went to. He'd go over this hill and stay all day long. He'd carry a lunch with him and everything. And nobody ever knew the secret where he got all this gold because he wouldn't tell anybody. But he'd bring back a little, you know, those little tobacco sites that they use. Mm -hmm. He'd bring one of those about half full of gold nuggets. And so he'd uh, grab me by the hand and we'd go to the store and he'd trade it in for food. And that's what we lived on, basically. That was all. Now, what kind of a lunch did he pack when he would go off to the hills? What, what would be a typical lunch for him? Oh, he loved sardines. <laughs> he would take sardines and crackers and, uh, you know, just uh, like Vienna sausages and stuff like that for his lunch. Crackers and that was it. Did you ever make burritos or anything like that? No, he never took anything like that. Uh, did, now, did your mom make tortillas? Oh, yes. The old-fashioned way? We lived on tortillas. That was our main bread in the house. Were they nice and round, or did they look yes. like the different states of the Union? No, my mother made round ones. I still make tortillas. How do you get them round? Yeah, that's a good it, It's an art. Yes. <laughs> You just, you make this little thing about this big and you roll it out with a pen and you have to keep turning it so that it'll get round. You pick it up and turn it around and it gets round. Well, sometime Ann and I are going to have to come over and you're going to have yeah. to show us because mine still look like all the different states of the Union when I get through with well, my tortillas. Well, you've had as much practice as I have. I raised eight children, so that was a lot of tortillas I had to make. And, you, and was that just the bread that was... That was the main. Once in a while we'd get biscuits. My mother would make biscuits, but our main thing was tortillas. 
And how long did your dad? How long did your dad then mine? I mean, prospect for the gold through the depression. Through the yes. And uh, from then it was weird because he went from being from panning gold. He was a probate judge. Really, in Hillsboro, when the uh, county seat was there, you know, the county seat used to be in Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. So he went from petting gold to being a probate judge. Now, how did that happen? I don't know, but it did. All of a sudden, he had quit petting gold and went to being a. He was, my dad was a very, very, very smart man. And uh, he would marry people, you know, back in them days, they got married by a probate judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, divorces and all kinds of things like that. Did he ever have any dealings with Sadie Orchard? Yes. As a matter of fact, my mother worked for Sadie Orchard. She was a housekeeper. At the Orchard Hotel? Yes. And tell us about that. That was very interesting because I was small, but I would go with her. And uh, of course, my mother did everything. She cleaned and she cooked and everything. So it was very interesting. I knew her personally, so I was there every day with my mother. What, what? did she look like? <laughs> um, she was. Yeah, she kind of reminded me of uh, Queen Elizabeth, something like that. Yeah. Very stately? Yes. And she had a temper. Did you ever see her temper? No. We found, we found various, and maybe they would have come before your father, uh, where that she would be shooting it at Mr. Orchard. And, with the, and there was a, a discharge of a firearm because she was angry at him, and, and they would go to court. And <laughs> yeah. Maybe that, Noel, when my mother worked for her, she didn't have a husband. I guess he had already died because she lived alone. Uh -huh. So I never knew her husband, but I knew her and her. My mother was there every day cleaning her house and cooking for her and everything. Did you realize what she was? Or no. when did you realize what she was? Well, after my mother had been there a while, I realized what she was. She, and actually, she was a very elegant person, you know, very just elegant. And to us, she was very nice. We got along with her very good. And was she living by herself at that time? Yes. In the hotel, or did she yes. have guests in the hotel? No, she was living by herself. And she died in 1943, didn't she? Mm -hmm. So but this was prior to, when, when did your mother work for her? Well, let me see. It was, I can think of the year. Probably in, in 39 or something like so that. So a few years before she passed away then, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And what about her furniture? Do you remember anything about the furniture? Oh, she had beautiful furniture. Just, I mean, we didn't have anything, so to me everything she had was just very, very elegant. You know, she had beautiful antique furniture. She had just everything. What about jewelry? She, she wore very beautiful jewelry. Any, you remember any brass beds that she might have had in the... Yes, she had some brass beds. Because yeah. she had, I think, two or three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And each one had a brass bed in it then. Mm -hmm. She had very nice, elegant furniture. When, when she died, she had nothing. What happened to all of that? You know, I don't know because my mother quit, I guess, before she died, and I don't know whatever happened to her stuff. I, I don't ever remember her having any um, relatives. So, Did you go to her funeral? Yes, 
Did you? And this. And why do you think that she's buried in this cemetery on Cedar Street versus in Hillsboro? What, what, what did you ever hear about that? I never did hear nothing about why they buried her here. Because she had been there in Hillsboro for years. Mm -hmm. We had heard the good people of Hillsboro didn't want to dig the grave because it was too rocky up on the on the hill. Well, it is. It is very rocky. Some of my relatives are buried up there, and it's a very bad place to. And which ba which relatives are buried there in the Hillsboro Cemetery? My stepfather and some of my cousins. And, and your stepfather's name was George. Padilla. Padilla, okay. And how old, how old were you when, when he was buried up there? Oh, I was, this has been, he hasn't been dead that long, because, oh. see, my mother and him moved here when they got elderly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to live in Cochillo, and then they moved over here. And, uh, they lived in the housing project. My mother died first, and he stayed and lived with us for five years. He lived five years longer than my mother. He was 94 when he died, wow. so I took care of him. And, uh, what happened to your real dad? My real dad went to live in Demi when him and my mother separated. Mm -hmm. They separated when I was about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And he moved to Demi with my three older sisters. I had three older sisters. And they moved all to Demi. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where he died and that's where he's buried. He's been dead for 60 years. Mm -hmm. Now, so when you left, so when you left Hillsboro, then you went to the, la he went to the latter ranch to work? My stepfather did. Your stepfather did. Went to work for the latter ranch. And that was Sam Lard that he worked for there? Yes. Was the manager? Mm -hmm. No, actually, uh, Burton Roach uh, okay. was the manager. Sam was the owner. Burton Roach was the uh, manager. Whatever you want to call it. He was the, the ranch manager. Oh, yeah. And for the audience, Burton Roach was the individual who carried the the uh, legislation uh, to Santa Fe, because he was a representative, to change the name from Hot Springs to Truth or Consequences. So he was a, uh, Burton Roach was a very uh, critical individual in Sierra County. I mean, he was a manager of the latter ranch. He was with uh, the Fish and Game, and he uh, was a state legislator or senator. So he was very involved in politics here in southern New Mexico. Uh, do you remember any other dealings with, you know, that you may have had or that your family had with Burton Roach? No, other than just him working there when we were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was about it. Now, do you remember the, any of the apple orchards or any of the different uh, orchards that were out around the Ladder Ranch at that time? No, I don't remember. They had a few houses there that had a few trees, but not many. What did you, what did you do when you were at the Ladder? You know, how did you spend your time there? Well. See, it, they had different ranches that they assigned you to, everybody that worked for them. So they assigned us to one uh, on Percha Creek. We lived close to the Chatfields. Mm -hmm. uh, they were our neighbors. So I, me and my stepdad rode horses, took care of the cattle. I helped him with the cows. So they had pink eye and whatever was wrong with him, I had to ride a horse and take care of uh, me and him. Would take care of the cattle that was on that ranch. And very interesting. Did you go to school? I went. To, yes, I went to school some in Hillsboro, and then I came when we moved here. I, I didn't finish school. I went to the tenth grade. 
and I quit to get married. <laughs> and so you were what, about 15? I was 15 when I got married. So what were some of the, uh, when living at the ladder before you moved into town, what, do you, what were some of the animals that you remember? Did you remember any of the uh, mountain lions or bear or turkey? Do you remember different types of? No, we never saw any of those. Yeah. So the cattle were pretty safe there then mm -hmm. when you were rounding yeah. them up. I used to ride 10 miles every day from our place to the big ranch on a horse. And what did and when you drove those ten miles, were you doing job chores for the ranch? Mm -hmm. So what would those encompass? Well, I would. I was working for Sam and his wife. I would, at my age. I mean, I was only like twelve years old. I was cleaning their house and stuff, taking care of their house, and that's why I went from our place to theirs every morning, so I could go clean and. And I also cleaned the bunkhouse for all the cowboys stayed because they had a big bunkhouse. How many cowboys worked there? Uh, probably 10, 15. Do you remember any of their names? No, I don't. How did they treat you? I never got to really see them because I would go in and clean the bunkhouses while they were out on the range mm -hmm. doing their thing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't deal with them very much. <laughs> I was in and out of there by the time they got back, so. Mm -hmm. And so then you moved into Hot Springs. Yes. And you went to high school. Up till 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And my husband had just got out of the Navy. He was older than, four years older than me. He had just got out of the Navy and I met him and we went together for about three months, and then we got married. What do you remember about Hot Springs at that time? Oh, it was a nice place. I mean, it was just, uh, there was none of the things going on that, were, that are going on now. It was a very pleasant place to live. Just, you could trust people. We didn't have all the goings on that are going on today. Uh, and it was really nice living here back then. It was simple, a simple life. Mm -hmm. And what's and and you by then your your father had moved to Deming and your mother had remarried. Mm -hmm. And where did your family live? I'm, was it close to where you are now here on on Gold and Magnolia, or were you? No, we lived. You know those houses on top of the hill by the water tank? Uh-huh. Right below there was a bunch of houses mm -hmm. there. That's where we lived. Mm -hmm. And so there was a grocery store. Wasn't the Apodoc up? Apodoc a grocery store right Yes, the, right down on, on Main Street. Main Street on the corner there. Mm -hmm. That was an Apodaca store. So there were what I recall uh, in the fifties was that there, uh, or you know, 50s to the 60s, there was a lot of like corner grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Is there that was. is that what you read? The Waldrops had one at Peter on the Hill, and another one of the Apodacas had one over here on Fourth Street, mm -hmm. and uh, just little grocery stores everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bullocks, of course, has been here a long time. Mm -hmm. It used to be on Broadway. And when my husband and I got married, we used to trade with him. Ed was the man's name. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, he cut up his own meat and everything, and we traded for it with him, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. What did your husband do? Uh, my husband was in construction. For, he helped build that road from here to the where the uh, dam is now. On 3rd Street? No, the dam. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, okay, so this would have been, that would have been the road that splits off from 3rd Street and goes to where the lake is now? All the way to the dam. All the way to the dam, okay. Mm -hmm. Where did the road go before they built that road? 
They had to come around the other way from that way to get down into the, you know, that other road that forks off over there. The old high, old Highway 85. Yeah. They had to go in through there. Okay. And it went over the end of the dam uh -huh. itself. Oh, yeah, you could still. The... Well, they they had already built that part where you could get through, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then later on, we moved away for a while, and he was in. Uh, he was. They were exploring for oil. We traveled around the country for about five years. We went to Montana, we went to Wyoming, we went to Colorado, we were in Texas. And moving our kids around from school to school. And then finally, when they got older and I wanted them to all graduate here, we moved back over here and bought this house. I've been living here for almost 50 years in this house. Did you ever, uh, in the exploring for the oil, did, did your husband work for anyone here locally that was looking no, for oil? No, it was a company out of uh, Texas. Okay. And he was uh, actually the man that handled the powder that, that they, you know, to, they used to call him a powder monkey, I guess, or something <laughs> like that. And that would be what they would use then to, uh, to, to, blow, to blow up the holes to yeah. see if they could find. And we just got tired of traveling. I said, it's time to go back home and let the kids graduate in Tier C. And now, about what year was that? Do you recall? We moved back here in... Uh, Let's see, we had Joe, my son Joe, that you just saw come going out. He was born in, still when we were traveling, he was born in Colorado, now in Wyoming, and Mary was born in Colorado. So they would have had to been, Joe would have had to been about five years old when we moved back here. So what year was Joe born? In 1952. Okay, so you came back like in the late 50s then. Yeah. Do you recall your family ever talking about uh, the centennial the, for New Mexico? Because obviously your family has been here with the Gurleys since the late 1800s or middle 1800s. About 1850 yeah. would have been how long the Gurleys were in the uh, chloride Winston area. Do you remember your family ever talking about what it was, you know, what stories were passed down? No, and I guess no. There is uh, one daughter of my cousin Virginia that is uh, kind of putting together a family tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the only one that because she likes to know everything about the family. <laughs> what is Virginia's last name? No, my her mother's name was Virginia. Uh -huh. This girl, what is her name? I don't remember right off. My mind's going, you know, I'll be 80 years old in October, so my mind is getting kind of, uh, I don't remember her name. Sometimes it's hard to pull a name up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's she's the one that's putting together a family tree thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and my grandson Joe, which is a sheriff, he he would like to do that too. He started in already putting. He's found out that uh, some of my some of the Bacchus, which was. His dad, some of the family came from Spain. He's found that much out. So he's kind of putting together a thing too. He's very interested in family matters. So.
Well, that's that's great. Yeah. So when you were so again as a child, you don't. What about any ghost stories that you heard? I mean, if you do, you remember any of the stories uh, when you were living at the Ladder Ranch or when you were living as a younger child in Hillsboro? Do you remember any ghost stories of that area? No. Lake Valley? No. Never heard any ghost stories. If there is such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't believe in ghosts. Uh, some people do. Well, and, and sometimes the stories were just passed on. They really weren't yeah. real, but they were people. They were stories that any 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 remembrances of La Llorona or keeping you out of the arroyas because of the water or anything like that. No, as a matter of fact, when the arroyo came down, when it rained up above in the Gila's, my mother would because uh, we lived on the other side of the creek. You know that creek that passes right in the middle of hills where we lived on the other side. When the creek would come down, after it went down a little bit, she would send us down there to pull out wood. Because they had a lot of wood that came down on the... Mm -hmm. So the water would go down a little bit and we'd get our shoes off and go in there and start pulling out wood. <laughs> to burn in the fire. To burn in our wood stove. Yeah. That's the only method of heating that we had was wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what she cooked with as well as with yes. the wood? Wood stone. We didn't have a refrigerator. They would cut out a window and put gunny sacks and they'd they'd wet them and they kept the food cold that way with the gunny sacks cold. Holding the moisture in and holding the moisture in. Cool. Yeah. They put the food in there. Yeah. Now, did you have, uh, when you obviously, you would have uh, prepared food for the winter, did you have red and green chili as well or did you just have red? We had both. And did they, they dried the red, they dried the green as well? Oh yeah, you can dry the green and make, uh, it's good for chillerietos. And how would they dry it? You just, back then they hung it on the clothesline. The way I dry mine, I put it on a screen. Mm -hmm. I put it out in the hot sun and dry it. That's the green? That's the green. Yeah. And the red, you just, you did it the same way, but you just waited until it was ripe, more ripe and turned red? Well, it turns, actually it turns red on the vine. Uh -huh. So they throw it up on a roof or up on a hill or something and let it dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, did my mother ground her own corn to make corn tortillas. And, yeah, we had a pretty rough life uh, growing up. We didn't have any money. My dad never owned a car in his life. Never. Everywhere we went, we walked. We'd walk. My kids all walked to school. They never had cars. Now every kid in town has a car. Mm -hmm. They had to walk from here to the, well, where the school used to be. They had to pack a lunch. And they, they did take burritos. I made burritos for them. And you know what? The, it was funny because the white kids would trade their sandwiches to them for the burritos. They wanted the burritos and my kids wanted the sandwiches. <laughs> so they swapped. They swapped. <laughs> when, you, when you were in Hillsboro and growing up, did you have a garden? No. We had a garden when we were at Lighter Ranch. And so is that, and then your mother would harvest all the food and what would she typically plant in the garden? Uh, we had uh, green onions, we had green beans, we had uh, cucumbers, we had tomatoes. Basically, you know, all the vegetables that we needed and then of course they, 
They furnished uh, chickens and we had pigs and cows, milk cows. So I learned how to milk a cow and I, they would send me out to the barn to get the eggs and yeah, all that. So I was very familiar with all the animals. Did you make chicharrones? Yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> they just, uh, they get the skins from the pig, you know, after they take all the hair and stuff off and they cut it in pieces, about yay big, and they throw it in one of these big black pots and fry them. And then from there you got the lard and the chicharrones at the same time. And you like the you like eating the skin then like that? Yeah. Where they it was tough. Well, no, if you fried them just right, they were just like the ones you get in the store, you know, in the packages. They, you you've got to know how to make them. So they're real tender, and they just break yeah, it. Yeah, they tough. just break for you. What are some of your other memories of growing up? Do you remember anything about going to visit family in Chloride? Or if you didn't have a car, did you, you went by wagon when you visited? Yeah, we even went by wagon sometimes at the land ranch. We used to um, visit a lot with the Chatfields. And every Sunday, one Sunday they'd come and eat at our house, and the next Sunday we'd go eat at their house. So we drove, we came down in the wagon to their place. And she used to ride a horse then too, so they would get on their horse and go up to our house, and, which was about maybe five miles. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had three sisters and one brother. And are they all, are they still living? No. My sister, my, the last one I had died almost two years ago. Yeah, I don't have, but just my kids and grandkids. My husband's been dead almost 20 years. I live here by myself. <laughs> so that's very good. Do you remember when they changed the name of oh, the town? Yes. Were you for or against it? I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's dumb. <laughs> I think a lot of the old timers. <laughs> yeah. They, it was better when it was hot springs. To me, it'll always be hot springs because right. I've lived here practically all my life, so I don't like the new name. What would you? To talk about your life from, from what you recollect and from leaving Chloride to go to Hillsboro to working on the Ladder Ranch to then moving into T or C, what would you like to tell your grandchildren or your great grandchildren about, about your life and your memories where you were living in this wonderful county we have? Well, I would like to tell them all that they should have lived in that era to appreciate the good times in life, the ones that we don't have today. That I was raised very simple, and uh, it was a happy time because everybody was happy. We didn't have nothing, but we were happy. Now you don't see very many people that are happy. They're stressed, they're worried about money and this and that, and that's something I've never done. You know, you either have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you're happy the way you live, then your life is, I think, complete. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like to leave my kids and my grandkids knowing that it was better then, back in when I was growing up, than it is today. Because I've got kids, grandkids that are so spoiled that I don't even like them. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They, you know that parents give them too much um, and they don't appreciate it. They don't want to work. 
I started working when I was 11 years old, and I worked until I was 73. That was my last job I had at 73. Mm -hmm. And it didn't hurt me. I'm still here. I still do all my housework. I still cook. I don't go out to eat. And I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that I have what I have, and I don't wish for any more. The only thing I wish is for my children to be happy and their children to be happy. And uh, that's it. I'm just waiting around when my time comes around to go on. I've lived a very good life. I don't regret anything that I've done. I've tried to be a good good person. I love to help people. I just enjoy helping people. And, that's, and you're very proud of your, your grandson. And I'm your, proud of so many of my children and, and grandchildren. I have some good ones and some bad ones, but <laughs> everybody has that, you know, but um, my children have been very good to me and they're, they're they all work. And who are your children? And Jen, what do they do? Uh, Jenny and Bobby Padilla. That's my oldest daughter. They live at Elephant Butte. And they're both retired. He retired from the <coughs> electric company out there, the REA. Mm -hmm. Jenny retired. She was an office manager for uh, Farmers Insurance. Uh, of course, Mary is city clerk. And my son Joe was a mechanic at one time, but he's retired. Uh, Clara, my other daughter, is sells carpet in Las Cruces. She works in a carpet store. Uh, let me see who have I left out. <laughs> of course, these two girls that you met out here, uh, they're both disabled, so they don't work. They're, they're on disability. Mm -hmm. And um, my youngest daughter is uh, an RN. She works in El Paso and a director of nurses. So, that's... And then my, my grandchildren are, some of them, like I say, are good. My, I'm very proud of my grandson, I can share. I was so young when I got married that my mother had kept me so sheltered that I didn't really enjoy my teenage years. By the time I was 15, I was married, so I didn't have much of a teenage years. And I had, if I went anywhere, she had to go with me. I wasn't allowed to go out by myself. <laughs> if she took me to a dance, you know, I had to go with her. And, um, In other words, you didn't date very much. No. I think. I had dated one or two other boys before I got married to my husband, which I hadn't, didn't know very long, maybe three months, because he had just come out of the Navy. And Was that an arranged marriage? No. no. Uh, it, uh, we fell in love and <laughs> got married, and my mother wasn't happy because I was so young, but and I thought, if I get married, maybe I'll have a little more freedom because she had been so strict with me that, and lo and behold, a year later, I had my first child. <laughs> and then I just kept on and uh, I didn't really have much of a life. I didn't know who I was because I kept having kids and then I had to take care of my mother and when she got sick until she died and took in my stepdad and then my husband got sick and I was always at the nursing home with him and working. I 
had so many jobs that I can't even count them. <laughs> Just worked about practically in every motel in this town, cleaning rooms. And I've washed dishes and everything. I've done it all. <laughs> what do you remember about all the hotels? What was the? Did you ever find money under the mattresses of any of the hotels, or no, no money at Sadie Orchard's hotel under a mattress when you was helping your mother? No, no. Yeah. What do you remember? Anything that was unusual about cleaning? No, you, it was a lot of hard work because people left messes. <laughs> That's what they leave in rooms of messes. <laughs> Uh, I was the first one, one of the first ones to work when they built the Ace Lodge. I was and what year was that? Was it about 1959 that they they built the Ace Lodge? Or was it earlier than that? No, it wasn't earlier. It was after the 50s. After the uh -huh. Almost close to the 60s. I uh -huh. guess. But I was one of the... That's when the fiesta actually started, and we would get all the movie stars that would stay there. Ralph Edwards stayed there, the movie stars stayed there, and they were the worst tippers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we worked so hard, and they didn't hardly give us any tips at all, we, and we used to have to work all day long. And messy, oh my goodness, those people were messy. Do you remember any of the movie stars that that were there? Uh, one year he brought, uh, Jay Mansfield, I believe. Mm -hmm. Another year he brought, Of course, I think Bob Barker used to come with him all the time. And really, I don't didn't pay much attention to them. I just cleaned their rooms, and that was it. And they didn't impress you, right? No, they didn't impress me one bit. <laughs> what other What other motels did you did you work at? I worked at um, which used to be the Desert View. Mm -hmm. The Frontier, which is the place across the street. I worked at um, Black Range. I worked at, um, you remember when the Vera Hotel was mm -hmm. up on the hill? I worked there. Uh, I worked uh, the other one that's over here on the corner of the Ninth, which is what's the name of that? Not the Red Haven. No. no. Sunland? Huh? Sunland? Sunland. Yeah, Palo I used to work at Sunland. And Palomino? There was a pet the Palomino. Yes. Yeah. I used, as a matter of fact, I managed that for a while. Oh, did you? Yes. Yeah. What about the one that was there where the Alco is now? Buena Vista? When? Yes. My husband and I both worked there. For Howard Hamlin? No, uh, Maria Moore had it. Okay, that was before Howard Hamlin then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, her husband was a banker. Mm -hmm. And she owned the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I cleaned rooms and my husband kept up the grounds outside. Those were beautiful grounds. Yeah. Because they beautiful. came clear down. Well, like from Alco, that all in front of Alco, the parking lot would have been a grounds. Yeah, it was a beautiful place. Yeah. And they had mineral baths there too, didn't they? No. No, there was no, no, mineral, no mineral baths. Uh, yeah, my husband and I both worked there. Yeah. Any other questions? No, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. And this is part of the Centennial series that uh, TV for TRC has been uh, viewing. And we can also video stream off compoespinosa.org. So, thank you. <laughs>